the topic for today is assignment model. Now remember, assignment model is dealing with allocation of resources. It is dealing with you know allocation or assignment of jobs to various workers, and it's also dealing with you know allocation of salesmen to various territories. So this topic is about allocation or allotment of particular tasks to particular worker or salesman or managers ultimately carrying an objective of minimization of costs and maximization of profits that is the essence of assignment model now assignment model is based on hungarian method right remember the name the name of the method is Hungarian method. So we will be solving, you know, this problem by applying all the steps of Hungarian method. Now, Hungarian method was developed by D. Konish, a um, Hungarian mathematic mathematician. So that is why this method is also popularly called as Hungarian method. Now, this problem, illustration number 19, in your handouts, in your textbooks. We will be solving it today whereby four jobs are there. These jobs are denoted by W, X, Y, Z. There are four workers. Workers are denoted by A, B, C and D. And the objective will be the assignment of jobs to various workers in such a manner so that the time, the total time to accomplish all these jobs comes out to be minimum. That is the idea behind you know, applying assignment model. So all these values are representing time in hours. Now suppose job W is performed by worker A. The time that he will take is approximately 41 hours. If the same job W is done by worker B, he is taking 72 hours to perform this particular job and so on. So all these values are representing time, time in hours. And remember, various factors like time, cost, distance, etc. These factors are always minimized. Whenever a problem is given regarding time values or cost values or distance matrices, these factors are always minimized while the problems related to profits or sales output quality quality of a product efficiency of the workers these factors are always maximized so the topic of today's lecture is minimization problem so we will be solving minimization problem because this problem is related to time now how to solve it as i have told you we will be applying certain steps of hungarian method now to understand all these steps please take down step number one denoted by rho operation step one that we will be applying today in hungarian method is rho operation now please write it down the statement of row operation select the select the minimum element minimum element from every row from every row and subtract it subtract it from all the elements subtract it from all the elements of the respective row subtract it from all the elements of the respective row full stop now how to solve it we will have to select the minimum value from every row like in this case in the first row the minimum element is 39 now we will have to subtract this 39 from all the elements of the respective row of this first row so when we subtract you know 39 from 41 so in the new table 
the format will be exactly same all these jobs will be there and these workers who are denoted by a b c d are in the first row when they are subtracting 39 from 41 the value will be 2 72 minus 39 that will be equal to 33 then 39 minus 39 will be equal to 0 and 52 minus 39 will be 13 right so what have we done we have taken the first row and we have selected the minimum element from this first row now when 39 gets subtracted from all these values the resultant table would be 2 33 0 and 30 now in the second row what is the minimum element in the second row 22 now when you subtract 22 from all the elements of the second row the new matrix would be as follows it would be 0 then 7 49 minus 22 will give you 27 and 65 minus 22 will be equal to 43 now in the third row the minimum element is 27 when you subtract 27 from all the elements of the third row you will get 27 minus 27 that will be equal to 0 39 minus 27 that will be equal to 12 then 60 minus 27 that will be equal to 33 and 51 minus 27 will be equal to 24 next in the last row the minimum element is 45 you subtract 45 from all the values you will have 0 5 then 48 minus 45 3 and ultimately 52 minus 45 will be equal to 7 so the first step row operation clear to everyone right okay now the next one please take down the step number 2 column operation column operation now in row operation we selected the minimum value from every row now we have to do the same in the column operation please take it down select the select the minimum element select the minimum element from every column from every column and subtract it subtract it from from all the elements subtract it from all the elements of the respective column subtract it from all the elements of the respective column now see what we did in the first step we are going to do it you know the exactly same process in the second step but we are going to do all these calculations from the resultant table so we are going to make use of this table to derive the next one that is column operation now in the first column the minimum is 0 so when we are going to subtract 0 from all the values the column will be exactly same so you will have 2 and triple 0 all the values you know eventually will be same so in the first column the minimum was 0 in this second column the minimum element is 5 now we subtract 5 from 33 we will have 28 then 7 minus 5 will be equal to 2 12 minus 5 will be 7 and 5 minus 5 will be equal to 0 so the second column has been done we move on to the third column in the third column the minimum value is 0 now when we subtract this 0 from all these values again the column values would be exactly same so we will have 0 27 then 33 and 3 now look at the fourth column what is the minimum in the fourth column that is 7 now when we subtract 7 from all these values 13 minus 7 will be equal to 6 43 minus 7 that will be equal to 36 24 minus 7 17 
and 7 minus 7 will be equal to 0. So are these two steps clear to everyone? Yes. First is row operation, second step is column operation. In the row operation, we select the minimum element from every row and subtract it from all the elements of the respective row. While in the column operation, we subtract, you know, the minimum value, we select the minimum value from every column and subtract it from all the elements of that respective column. Now take down the third step, step number 3. Please take it down, draw minimum number of lines, DRW draw minimum number of lines to cover all zeros. Draw minimum number of lines to cover all zeros. Now in this table which is derived after applying column operation, you have to draw minimum number of lines to cover all zeros. Now each and every zero should be covered by a line and lines can be drawn either row wise or column wise. There isn't any other process to draw the lines. So you will have to cover all these zeros by drawing minimum number of lines and the lines, you know, they have to be drawn either row wise or column wise. So we look at, you know, the maximum number of zeros which are existing in this first column. We draw a line to cover these zeros. So simultaneously three zeros are covered by drawing a single line. Then we look for another set of maximum zeros whether existing in rows or columns. So we see that another you know maximum zeros are lying in this fourth row. So we draw another line to cover all these zeros. Our task is to you know cover all these zeros by drawing minimum number of lines. So now we are left with only one zero. That means we have to draw a line. The line can be drawn either row wise or column wise. The result would be same. So how do you want to draw it? Row wise or column wise? Okay, so we draw it column wise. So all the zeros have been covered and this was our condition that we have to draw minimum number of lines to cover all zeros. Right? Is it clear? Draw these lines then we move on to the next step. That is step number so please take it down. Step number four. Check the condition. Check the condition. Please take down the condition in the next line. Whether the number of lines drawn, whether the number of lines drawn are equal to the are equal to the order of the matrix whether the number of lines drawn are equal to the order of the matrix so you have to check this condition that whether your lines the lines you have drawn are equal to the order or not, right? So you have to check this condition. Now the number of lines that are drawn over here are 3, right? The number of lines are 3 while the order, now look at the order, the word order represents the number of rows and columns present in the table. We have 4 rows and 4 columns. So the order over here is equal to 4. Since the number of rows and columns are 4, therefore the order will be equal to 4. Had there been 5 rows and 5 columns, the order would have been equal to 5. If there were 6 rows, 6 columns, then the order would be 6. The number of rows and columns, they have to be same. If they are not same, that's a case of unbalanced assignment problem, which should be balanced by adding either a dummy row or a dummy column, right? So over here, we have taken up a problem where the number of rows and columns are same. Had they been unequal, we would have balanced it by adding either a dummy row or a dummy column. 
Now over here, the number of rows and columns are 4. Therefore, the order is also equal to 4. Had there been 5 rows or 5 columns, the order would have been 5. Now the lines are 3 and the order says 4. So are they equal? No. They are not equal. So that was our condition which you were supposed to check whether the number of lines and orders, you know, order that is equal or not. So the number of lines are 3 and the order is equal to 4 over here since there are 4 rows and 4 columns. Now since the condition is not satisfying up to here, so you will have to take down another step. Please take down step number 5. Step 5. If no, then proceed as follows. If no, then proceed as follows. Right? Since the condition is not satisfying, so you will have to make you know adjustments as far as you know this step is concerned. Step number five. So please take down the statement in step number five. Select the minimum element. Select the minimum element from all the uncovered elements. Select the minimum element from all the uncovered elements. Full stop. Subtract it. Subtract it from all the uncovered elements subtract it from all the uncovered elements and and add it add it on the add it on the point of intersection add it on the point of intersection right taken it down now see you just have to look at all the uncovered elements which have not been covered by these lines you will have to select the minimum element from all these uncovered elements so what is the minimum element that is 2 right the statement says that you have to select the minimum element from all the uncovered elements further it has been explained that you will have to subtract this minimum element from all the uncovered elements. Now this 2 will be subtracted from all the uncovered elements. So you will have to construct a new table to make an adjustment. The values, I mean the format will be exactly same. You will have workers and similarly jobs. Now see. This 2 is subtracted from this uncovered element 28. So in the new table, you will have 26. 2 minus 2 will be 0. 7 minus 2 will be 5. Similarly, 6 minus 2 will be 4. 36 minus 2 will be 34. And 17 minus 2 will be 5. So we have to subtract this 2 from all the uncovered elements. And we will have to add this 2 at the point of intersection you know, where the two lines are intersecting at this place and at this place where the intersection is happening where the intersection is taking place so when 2 is added to this 0 it will be equal to 2 and when 2 is added to this place of intersection where 3 is already there so 2 plus 3 will give you 5 rest all the elements will be taken down as they were so 2, 0 and 0 will be exactly same this 0 is same 0, 27 and 33 and this 0 will be exactly same so is this step clear to everyone? one of the most crucial step whereby you have to select the minimum element from all the uncovered elements you had to you know add it at the point of intersection while all the other covered elements you know they were copied as they were now again draw minimum number of lines to cover all zeros to find the number of lines so you see there are two zeros we cover you know this line I and mean, then all these zeros column wise 
Then again, there are two zeros existing in this fourth row. The line is drawn and simultaneously two zeros are covered. Now there is only one zero in the first row, so it, this line you know can be drawn row wise or column wise. And ultimately, there is only one zero in this particular row, so this can also be drawn either row wise or column wise. So again, you count the number of lines. So the number of lines are one, two. 3 and 4. The number of lines are 4 and you have to check whether that is equal to the order or not. And yes, now your number of lines, they are equal to the order of the matrix. So you know this condition is satisfying now. Had there been 3 lines again, you would have you know repeated this particular step. That is, you could have again you know selected the minimum element from all the third elements. You would have added it on the point of intersection so you would have followed exactly the same course of action if again the number of lines you know they were less than the order of the matrix but now since it is satisfying this condition so take down the last step step number six the final step of the Hungarian method before we come to the end of this important chapter called assignment so take down the step number six if yes then proceed as follows if yes then proceed as follows now your condition is equal the lines are equal to the order so you are writing it you know for the condition which has been satisfied and the explanation is as follows now you have to search for a single zero Right, so write it down. Search for a single zero first row wise and then column wise. Search for a single zero first row wise and then column wise. Full stop. Select the Select the unique zero. Select the unique zero and make assignment to it and make assignment to it by enclosing it in a box. Make assignment to it by enclosing it in a box full stop cancel out cancel out all the other cancel out all the other adjacent zeros adjacent zeros as existing in the existing in the respective row or column existing in the respective row or column right so do rewrite this table where the lines were equal to the order so what we have done we have just you know taken down this particular table neatly the values are exactly same so please take down this table for the final time before we make you know the assignments. Okay. So now the assignment procedure, how we are going to follow it? Please look at your first step. What have you written? You have just taken it down that you have to select the unique single zero. By you know observing it row wise, you can also observe it column wise. But you will have to look for a single unique zero. So in the first row, we have this unique zero, right? The only zero that we have. And as soon as we get it, we will have to enclose it in a box, right? To make an assignment at this place. Now when we are making this assignment, we will look for you know zeros if they are existing in that particular column or row. If there are any other zeros, you know, they will be crossed, they will be cancelled. 
but since there is no other zero in that particular column, nor no zero in that particular row, we are not going to cross anything. Now we are going to look in the second row. Is there any unique zero in this second row? There are two zeros, so you cannot make assignment over here. Okay, we'll drop this particular row. We move on to the next one. In this third row, is there any single unique zero? Yes, it is there. So we are going to make an assignment over here. As soon as we make an assignment over here, the zero above it will be crossed, will be cancelled. Now when this is cancelled, now please look at the second row. Now when this is cancelled, we are left with one zero only. Now since there is only one zero in this particular row, we are going to make an assignment over here. And as soon as we make an assignment over here, the zero below it will be cancelled. Right? Any number of zeros, if there are, all other zeros would be cancelled. Now moving on to the fourth row. In this fourth row, there is only one zero in the last one. And we make an assignment over here. So we have an assignment in every row and in every column. Now we'll have to write down the, we'll have to give the conclusion part to portray what exactly we have done in this topic. Now your conclusion would be optimum assignment schedule. How are we how we are going to give it, please see job W this has been allotted to worker C right, in this particular row there is a box under you know, column number C then job X has been allotted to worker B job Y that has been assigned to worker A Job Z that has been assigned to worker D. Now just look at your initial table. Please look at your initial table and see what are the values you know existing in this particular row, W row and C column. 39. What is the value? That is 39. Since the values were in hours, so you'll have to give the unit. Now look at row X. Column B. 29. 29 hours. Now just look at job Y and worker A. 27 hours. That is 27 hours. And finally, job Z and worker D. 52 hours. That is 52 hours. Now we have to total it up to get the total minimum time of accomplishment of all these jobs that will come out to be that is equal to 147 hours so this is the total time to complete to perform all these jobs the total minimum time to accomplish all these jobs by the respective worker so we are through with this assignment model which is based on Hungarian method and all these steps form you know an indispensable part of Hungarian method. Right? Okay.